All right, starting the recording here. And let me get the doc going too. Oh, we're recording already. Great. <laughs> Let's see. Go to the meeting notes. And we're going to share. All right. Great. All right, we should be all set here. I think if Harshit's trying to get his audio going still, maybe. Um, hi, all. Uh, there he is. It sounds like you had a great presentation today, Harshit. Nice work. Yeah. So do you have any questions immediately for us? Uh, Mark's putting on some of his questions that he had also asked in the channel. Uh, I think maybe that's the same thing as you too. Um, so I think uh, are we ready to release the username password credential binding. Uh, looks like uh, Mark had done some testing. You had done some testing uh, and mostly just nitpick reviews at this point. I am t now, I mean, I see myself three times. I don't know what, why is this happening? I mean, every time I log out and log in, uh, I am added once more in the participant oh. list. Yeah, I wonder if it's maybe hanging on your connection. Mm, yeah. And Justin, you could, I, I don't have admin permission, but you do, you could just drop the other two, two connections. Yeah, I can do that. Uh, Harshit, could you talk again real quick? Yeah, so I think I'm the first one, or I mean, the mic is working. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, one more time, I just to double check. I'm pretty sure I got the right one. Oh, okay. yeah, so We're good. all set. Okay. We're squared away. Does that turn out better for you on your side? Yeah. Great. So Mark, Mark's teeing up a great question. Any objection to Verge as is with all 40 plus commits? Uh, personally, I have no objections. Um, I'm all good with that. Anyone have any other thoughts? So Mark, we will be releasing the, by, the binding this week. Yeah, I was I was intending to release it tonight or right now. Basically, if if we as a group say yes, we're ready to go. I think it's time to merge it, release it, 
and then you can base your private key implementation on a stable version instead of having to do all sorts of games with with uh, versions that haven't been merged yet. Does that work okay for you, Harshad? Yeah, it's both kinds. Yeah, I feel like I've I've been not as intensely focused on the code review as I have been on the interactive testing, but all my interactive testing has been been quite satisfactory. So I I don't see much reason to to delay it. And and yes, if if we have objections to documentation or something like that. Those are pretty easy things to fix. The functionality is there, and I feel like it's, as far as I can tell, it's very strong. Yeah, and I think my nitpick doesn't really even, it isn't visible uh, on the UI. I, I double checked your screenshot, and I don't. I think we're all good there. So it's just more of a style and uh, you know, and code question. I'm not concerned about merging it. Yeah, no, I could no. also be told that I'm wrong, so <laughs> I'm not not feeling strongly about my comments there. A part of me was was thinking, hey, should we do a blog post to to introduce it? Because really, this is one of the top three most requested, most highly voted uh, Jenkins enhancement requests, and so it may be it may justify a blog post to say, hey, look, step one of this highly requested feature is here. Here are some ways you can use it. Uh, the documentation says that already, but a blog post is a way to make it even more visible saying, look, this thing is ready, go ahead. I'm certainly gonna, when I release it, I'm gonna tweet about it. And usually for whatever reason, when I tweet about the Git plugin, I, the tweets become very popular. Yeah, I think that'd be, a, I agree with you. If I yeah. recall correctly, we have maybe done some of that with Rishab's uh, project as we well. We did. Yeah, that was that was exactly what we did with Rishab's work last year and it, it was very well received. And then that's, that's just another good artifact for you to point at with the Google Summer of Code stuff too. Mm-hmm. Does that kind of make sense for shit? Yeah. So yeah. in the blog post, we have to explain the procedure of how to operate the binding, or do we have to give an overview of what we have achieved? So what I was thinking the blog post would be is is tell the high level story why this why credentials binding is so useful and so important to first pipeline users and second, even to freestyle users. And, and the, the big compelling value that, hey, all sorts of things, and, and the evidence there for me is there are four or five enhancement requests that I closed as a result of doing this implementation where people wanted this, this novel behavior or that novel behavior or this other one. And in each of those cases, Credentials binding allows them to do that without us having to write code for it. We, your, your work on credentials binding has enabled many different use cases. And for me, that's the story the blog post should tell is, hey, this thing is, is really a significant addition to the functionality of, the, of Jenkins. And even better, okay. it uses standard facilities that are already already in credentials binding. So it's that that makes it even better because if they weren't using credentials binding before, now they learn, oh, I can use credentials binding for these other purposes as well. Yeah. I don't understand why it says checks if not. Oh, I know why. Because I just did. Build. 
So back to my earlier question, Harshit, any objections to you if I merge? Any, any objections no, from no, you no. if I merge? And Justin, no, no. any from you? Nope. Let's do it. And, and Rishabh, Rishabh had already said uh, he had already said yes. So yeah. so I'm I'm going to go ahead and do the merge. We'll accept that there are. Well, Justin, your question on oh the the logging improvement that Rishabh suggested is still certainly possible. That's not blocked by releasing again, or by by doing a release. Uh, formatting not an issue. We know how to do that. Okay, now there's one question here. Get Git client instance. He asks, why was that added to the contract? And so I don't understand that. I don't understand that question. Let me, sh well, um, Justin, could you open up the, the pull request? It's Git yeah. plugin pull request 1104. Let's look at this one comment together, and Harshit, you can probably give us a some clarification. Perfect. I believe you can see both my tabs, correct? Yes. Yeah. We All see. Right. Well, we see. Yes, we see that one that just works. fine. So, looking right. at. Yeah, I think it's the convert. Well, I'm looking at the conversation tab. Conversation yeah. tab, I think. And if you look for the phrase contract to be implemented. Oh, Rishab's here. Very good. Okay. Hey, Rishab. Hi, just hi everyone. I'm so sorry for joining you. Hey, no worries. <laughs> Wait a second. It's the wee hours of the morning for you. We're delighted that you're here. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. Even even worse, you were awake only 12 hours ago. As part of the uh, as part of the presentation, so yeah. Um, uh, uh, did I interrupt something? I'm sorry. We were just discussing. Actually, your timing is perfect because we we had just come to the agreement that we would go ahead and merge, so that I could start the release process, and we may even have the release done by the time our meeting ends today. And, but there was this one question you asked about why, why this is added to the contract to be implemented. Is that comment such that you feel like we need to, is this one we need to, because, because implementation contracts are permanent once released, tell us more about your question or harsh it. If you feel like you can give an answer, that'd be fine too. My question, yeah, my question is, what I've asked there, but uh, do we need that? Uh, why do we need this flexibility? Is it is this uh, uh, portion of code something that depends on is, is conditioning some users' uh, logic? Why why do we want to add this flexibility? Because I saw the code, what it does, and I, and I could not find a reason why. We would not do it and provide it to the user. So, what this does is given a string that represents the Git executable and a repository environment variables it returns the git client instance and it's used mm -hmm. in the bind to set the git environment variables so this is turning the git tool name into a git client instance that then is used for the environment variables so is your your question then why not make that a private method inside Get username password binding instead, or no? As as we're doing with um, uh, this uh, this method called get to name, right? Get get to name, get CLI get to. 
So there, what we're doing is that we're ensuring we, we have we have placed our own logic, which is going to run. But we're not giving placing the responsibility on the user to implement the logic to resolve the issue. Similarly, why well, I I was thinking that why do we need uh, to place that responsibility to the user? when we know that this is going to be constant it's not going to change this portion this two lines of code to get the get instance from the get to me or is it something that yeah, is there a reason for making adding it to the contract and making it implementable by um, users that's i that's that was just my question well i think that the, the api that i provided in the interface i mean uh, i have provided all the parameters that are required for the programmer to create a git client instance so in in my implementation i am not using the repository so the method dot using that could be used to set a specific repository in which the git client instance will be available so i am not using that so i think that could be used by another programmer based on his in on their logic so that's why i made you know a met overrided method instead of a default implementation but default impl implementation can also be overridden so but i think it's better for the programmer to have the choice of the implementation as in my case this implementation worked fine but i am not sure how the other uh, pro for the other programmers the implementation will look like so okay. um i think that's a in my opinion that's a good idea but um, in the way the, the way we could find out how this is being implemented is that we could look at how the git plugin uses it for for the major functionality it performs right because i think that is the biggest consumer of uh, getting a git client so if if we know that if we can safely assume that this is uh of 90 or let's say 99% of the users are going to do i'm not sure i i did not get the point of using the repository to uh, Are you saying that there is another way to get the get uh, get instance uh, the client get get client from except uh, does the git dot with uh, accept repository as an argument to uh, create the client? Are you saying something like that? Oh uh, no, it's a helper method. I guess in it's an API provided by the git that shows where you want to. have the git client instance in which repository you want to have the git client instance okay that's something that you you're I, saying is pro yeah i mean i uh, there there are two options right you only said that you can provide a default in, installation uh, implementation and people can override it if they Or to, or yeah. they could use this. Uh, yeah. I think if if this is what is being used majorly by the by the consumers of this uh, API, then we can provide the default implementation and remove that uh, uh, you know that responsibility from the user. But uh, it's not. It's like a nitpick. I I don't think. It, I'm not sure if uh, this is something that we would should do right now. To, but then Mark said that this is permanent. right yeah we once we've once we've published an api where we we will it is very rare that we will risk the danger of unpublishing it of de of deleting it but then again the 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 messiness in the git plugins apis is already sort of legendary so mm. i i'm not overly worried about about this one addition here in part because i don't expect um any implementation to any other implementations to extend or to implement git credential bindings outside of this plugin i could be wrong i've been wrong in the past on that but 
usually it takes years before others start considering implementing things that the Git plugin provides from its internals. So then we can, uh, then we can safely yeah. use it. I think, it's okay. yeah. yeah, we could make this at the fault then. What's uh, what do you think, Mark and Justin? Do you think that it's, a, it's it's an effort we should take right now, or it's it's just okay because so as you for said, me, it's not going to be implemented. Yeah, I, I'm prone to not take the effort just because if we do change it, I feel like I've got to go through interactive again and verify interactively with the, the modified code. And so there's there's a, a motivation to me to say, no, let's not change it. Let's go ahead and ship it because we want to get harsh it onto fully focused on the private key work. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That seems like a fair assessment of the downsides and, and upsides of that. I, I guess if it was easier, if it was easier to remove it than that, then maybe I would like that maybe it'd be nice to remove it, but yeah, given the interactive testing that you have to do, like that seems reasonable. And and given the facts that that it's quite unlikely that someone's going to take a dependency on this API anyways, and the harm in someone taking a dependence on the, on it probably isn't a lot. But. So so to to double check, so what? What I think, Rishab, your point is, is if I'm implementing the Git credentials binding interface, I must provide an implementation of Git, Git client instance. And that implementation I must yes. provide will probably be those exact two lines that are in the implementation already. Yes, the only point, the only logic being that um, a V should not assume that the user is uh, a customer aware of the Git to uh, of the Git plugins ecosystem or let's say APIs. Let's say they want to implement the binding or extend the binding and um, they don't want to. But it, it, it feels like an extra step, but then it's okay because you, you told me, you said right, the reality is that the binding itself is not going to be extended it's not like it's it's something which is going to be frequently extended by users or developers so definitely we can uh, yeah we can go ahead the cost of uh, doing it is right now considerable at this stage so harsh uh, yeah. back to you are you one more round of safety checking is any objections to me going ahead with the merge then? No, for me, I, I, I'm okay for both the cases. If you want to change the implementation, I'm okay with that as well. Uh, if you want to go with merge, I'm okay with that as well. And Risha, back to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with the current it's great. And Justin? Okay. All right, then I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just hit the merge button. And that will, oops. Okay, merge. All right, now we'll let that CI job run for the 30 minutes that it needs to. And I'm going to launch on my local systems the same thing.
GitHub checks are great. Yeah. Okay. So builds, if I remember, I take 30 to 45 minutes for this particular thing because of the number of tests, et cetera. And right now my infra is mostly offline because I haven't restarted it recently. So half the agents are currently not online. So it'll be busy for a while. Okay. Cool. We'll be kind of in holding pattern for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then I guess after this, then you, you're going to handle kind of the release then, or is that, is that something Harsh right. is helping out with or? No, no, that's that's something that has to, we're still, we still release from my desktop. So we haven't oh, yet right. switched to use um, the, the automated release systems. So this will be, yeah, I'll, I'm going to build it, install it in my local Jenkins instance, restart the instance do some preliminary smoke tests. And then, then if I haven't run out of one run out of awakeness, I will release it within the next hour. If not, I'll release it tomorrow when I'm awake again. <laughs> Mark dot sleep. Exactly. Well, and Mark's got an embarrassing one that the Jenkins release that should have happened today didn't because there was an infrastructure problem that I should have investigated, but I, I didn't, I was busy doing other things. So we're one day late for the Jenkins weekly that should have been delivered yesterday or should have been delivered today. The eternal realities of modern software development. Yes, yeah, that's a way to say it. I like that. <laughs> um, Harshit, did you have questions about private key implementation status? Or was it a question to Harshit? No, just, he, I know he'd been working on it. If there were any questions, oh. I put that as a placeholder. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, we have a new release of Blue Ocean. Well, I have one question. Mark, did you check the license that I asked on the GitHub chat? Is it compatible with the license? I did not. Very good question. Let me ask that. So let's go to the, I'm going to post a question to the developer mailing list on that because th that's an excellent question. I did not do the research on it, Harshit. Let's see. Let me find that. It was, it's LGPL3, right? Yeah. Yeah, also, um, sorry to interrupt. I, <clears throat> on the same lines, um, Harshit, you were saying that the, the libraries uh, we tried, you're saying that they were not able to get the correct private key. They were not able to uh, convert the private key, the fast phase protected private key into the correct decrypted private key. Is that, is that what you um, found out? I think the for when I change the format, or the file format to PEM or any other B B base sixty four encoding, the private key generate and the form file format generated is is not being accepted by the the server. It thinks that the this the the public key and the private key are not matching. I would say they are not authenticating, forming a valid key pair. So. I think the it was an issue when I'm converting the byte the byte for the byte key private key into a file format. So that there is where I'm getting an issue. But the plugin that I suggested, sorry, the 
library that I have suggested is performing this on by its own. So I don't have to care much on the formatting of the file. I, it just creates a form, file form. It just creates a string for our, us rather than creating a byte array, which is done mm -hmm. by the previous implementations. Maverick simulation. So is that only for certain uh, types of keys? Or is that just kind of happening in all cases? Uh, I think it, it's happening in all of the uh, law. I have tested it on OpenSSH key format uh, only for now, because the other formats are being handled by the but credentials but nee, so that was yeah bouncy castle api plugin that is provided by jenkins so uh, right, that was right, not right. an issue for me okay yeah so yeah because you were looking to use sshj for specifically for the um for these yes i have another doubt for regarding the scope of the get uh, there's a method in git uh, git client plugin named you know get ssh executable method so and it is i think package private so but we need it we need the implementation in our binding as well to find the path for the ssh in windows environment Uh, it's in the Git plugin or Git client plugin, you said, right? Yeah. What was the name of the method you were? Get SSH executable. this this one So you want to be able to use that in the Git plugin. Yeah. Okay. Because this method provides the path to the 
SSH executable in Windows and but it is pa package private scope. And, and my my reason for not making it public was because I was embarrassed by the implementation. <laughs> I apologize for my embarrassment, but trying to find SSH on Windows had all sorts of awful problems. I mean, you, you can see it in, if you look at the code, how it's, it's making all, all sorts of guesses. Oh, what about here? What about here? Let's try here, maybe oh. here. I remember having to do the or exactly for this, well, but for other let's, let's play this guess or this guess guess but I think I, it certainly has been there for a very long time and for me I have no objections if it were to if it were to be made public let's see let me look at the blame the history on it so it was 2014 first, yeah it's only seven years old so it's probably pretty stable. Can we not just duplicate this? It doesn't seem that this is using something related to the trying to. Sorry, what was that, Rishab? I was just saying that um, can we know, can we not duplicate this to the Git plugin instead of inferring it from the Git client plugin? We could, but then we've got to maintain it, maintain that horrible guesser code in two places. Yeah, that, that is and and really, to me, the when I look at that, I think the the location of SSH is is very much a command line get specific thing and command line get specific things probably should stay inside the git client if if my preferences are held just because that's 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 a kind of, that's a level of guessing that that i wish we didn't have to do truthfully Understood. So should we change the scope of the method to public or do we have to get a repo method like we did for the is at least method? I would just change the scope of the method to public. You're, are you already yeah. calling CLI git uh, methods? I think you are in the git plugin, right? There were some places where we needed to call APIs that are specific to the CLI git API impl class. Yeah. So I would just make the it method. public. Yeah, I think that kind of makes sense because, um, yeah, Git client plugin is a dependency of Git plugin and not the other way around. Yeah. And then it would require some Java docs to explain the method as well, or the API. Yes, yeah, yes, and, and and you probably shouldn't use the word. Mark Wade is ashamed of this method in there, but you might think about. I guess one other question back, um, sorry, jumping back a little bit, unless we still have more questions about this one. I think this one's closed, right? Does that help you on this particular question? Sorry, I don't want to jump back to the other question before we finish on this one for you, Harshit. No, nothing from okay. my side. Okay. Um, do you feel like, are there other things that 
you think you can look at for the SSHJ thing for like while we figure out the answer to the license question, uh, like as a backup plan, or or do you need uh, guidance from us? I have tried the SSHJ library, but I have not. I am pretty, you know, I'm not able to. I'm stuck on that thing only to convert the byte array into the file new file format. So this is that's causing an issue for me. Another alternative I have not I have not searched much on that. I'm currently I'm working with the Ma Maverick library only. So if you have if you all have any you know alternative or something to suggest that would be great. Um, Maverick seems to be, um, I was just trying to compare actually, uh, uh, so I was just saying that Maverick seems to be a new, a relatively new library, right? Uh, Harshit, do you think it consists of four branches and four seventy two months? Sorry, this is why I didn't get in. No, no, I was just uh, I was just looking at the library. Yeah, if it works for you, I I don't have a problem. If, if so, you're directly getting the um uh the decrypted key in a string content, right? Yeah. And the problem you're facing with SSJ or any other library is that it gives you that same content in a byte in a byte array uh, in a byte array and then you have to convert it into a file first and then you convert that to a pen or do you convert that into a string base 64 uh sorry the byte array into a string and then encode it base 64 and then try to do something with it uh, i try to convert the byte array into file format directly there is a method provided by the Bouncy Castle Java implementation named PEM write object. So that does the work for me. Okay. Okay. Also, the byte uh, so array generated is. Oh, yeah, sorry. No, go ahead. So I was saying the byte array generated was in a format. Uh, it was in format PKS8 format. I think I have mentioned on the Gitter chat as well. I think that could be an issue of converting into PEM format, but I have to work a no. bit more on that. Okay, this is news for me because I thought you're saying that the uh, encrypted private key, the, the AES 56 encrypted private key, when you decrypt it using the library, it's providing you the key in PKCS format. Yeah. Back. I mean, and then, the yeah, I'm okay. No, no, I'm sorry. I was just saying that if that is the case, then, um, then we would have to handle those keys by using, um, Java's uh, PKCS implementation because it would not understand it directly. I would assume. But why? Okay, uh, that's something that I would have to also look because I did not. Uh, uh, I mean, I provided the code for that. You can look from there. Okay. Where have you provided your code? Oh, the in the chat only, right? Yeah. I'm quite some comments as well.
And did you say that you um, included some, I saw you include some code that I think was for Maverick Synergy. Did you say you also had a uh, code for the SSHJ one? I think I had an audio issue. So can you say that again? Just oh, sure. Uh, might have been my side too. Um, I I see that you had included some code for the Maverick Synergy. Uh, did you also include some for SSHJ? Maybe that was a while back too. So I apologize if that's what I meant. The code that I have put in the chat. In the Gitter, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I have included that. Uh, I mentioned the methods that ha I have tested. So there are at least four methods, at least three or four. So, and two types of encoding that I'm using. So there's four base 64 and PEM encoded. Hmm. I'm not seeing it, but that could be my search foo is not working well on <laughs> on Gitter. Um, did you? I guess one question I'd have is if you convert directly to a file first, uh, are you passing the same encoding that should be expected for for the byte stream? Uh, I just wonder if anything's getting like kind of swapped in terms of like encodings, but. I'm, I'm assuming you've probably already taken a look at that. I think I remember you passing in a coding before, but. Yeah, so the encoding, yeah, the encoding, I, I'm not sure about the, are you talking about the algorithm or something else? Well, so when you write a file, you have to tell it what encoding you want to write the file with. I, maybe that was optional. Um, but I do remember, like, I mean, I've had problems in the past where if I don't exactly line up the encoding for some of these kind of uh, more interesting use cases, sometimes that can cause some problems. It, I'm not suggesting that it's definitely the problem here, but a possibility. Yeah, I think it could be a possibility. I have to look into that. Okay. Well, I will inform you on the Gitter chat. Okay, sure. The only difference, can, discernible difference I could find between Maverick and SSJ is that SSJ is older and Maverick is relatively new. I'm not sure if that is something we want to do. Yeah, although for me, the uh, and I agree, the more mature is, is interesting. I like seeing the history of Maverick Synergy and the fact that it's got a commercial entity behind it. That's that's very comforting. Comforting. Yes. Yeah. If the if the code were MIT licensed, the answer would be trivial. Go with it. Uh, yeah. I just don't know the limits on LGPL three and what it means in the Jenkins project. Yeah, that, that, that's 
might be hard, but yeah, I don't know <laughs> exactly for Jenkins. I think that since we're not sure about the Maverick library, I will be working more on the SSD then using the SSD yeah. and figure out if I'm able to resolve the issues. Yeah, and I guess uh, I have kind of what might potentially be a silly idea, but could be an interesting idea from a licensing perspective, but maybe annoying for you from a user perspective is that you could since this is a particular type of SSH key, like maybe you can make this an optional plugin, but I'm not, I don't really like the solution. I just want to really like, really make sure that's clear. <laughs> uh, I mean, theoretically, I think you could not make this available to people unless they specifically installed it, which would mean that they're accepting the license if that were helpful for the Jenkins project and they weren't happy with the LGPL license. And maybe right. that's so, still not even an option, but. Yeah, that's a good question. So, ah, uh, ah, uh, oh no. Okay, so we've at least got some components that are dual licensed. The Java Native Access Library, i.e. JNA, is dual licensed Apache 2.0 and LGPL 2.1. And Java Assist. And the JRuby Complete. And it looks like possibly the MariahDB Java client library is LGP2, LGPL21. So, oh, and the icon V library is LGPL. So there definitely are some LGP, LGPL libraries at least referenced in the CloudBees documentation. So I sus my, my suspicion is LGPL3 is going to be okay. I don't see any okay. LGPL3 in the, in the list of known licenses used in CloudBees products, but I see LGPL2.1. So I'm not sure, Harshit, that I would shift your focus away from Maverick if, you, if you've got Maverick working. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm just concerned about the license only. So right. Everything and, is working. Yeah. If if we if we can get it functional, that for me is much more valuable right now. And let's let's get through the getting it functional, assuming that because the only the only thing you're doing with this particular library, the Maverick Synergy library is being used to read and write the keys. You're not using it to actually make an SSH connection. You're not using it for any network connection. You're not using it for, for anything other than reading and writing files, right? Did I understand correctly? Yes, ma'am. Okay.
yeah, so uh, I, it's a, in terms of my advice, proceed with Maverick Synergy, my thought was if we go ahead, worst case, we discover, hey, we're not a use, allowed to use LGPL3. Okay, then we got to look for an alternative. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I mean, LGPL3 is an open source license and it's, it, it just, it, it is a GP, one of the GPL family. Uh, if it works for you, Harshit, I think you should go ahead with the implementation. Yeah, I've noted that and underlined it just to I'll bold it even. Boom. Do that. Mm. <laughs> right. Oh. Any other doubts, Harshit? Anyone? Well, I'm thinking of making a PR, hopefully, right today for the binding, particularly in for Linux distributions, because for the Windows, we are, you know, I have to first make the method public, only then it will work for Windows, and then use incrementals. And I like that a lot, because if you if you've got a pull request, that gives a chance for me and others to do some interactive testing and code review. So I think I think that's very promising. Cool. You said you'll put together PR for Linux, correct? Just to make sure I don't have those flipped. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mark in here that we put together a blog post for the release. Follow us uh, uh, as. Great. And as you mean that the Facebook is ended, and if it has, then um, will Hashit write a blog for the Facebook? Is that something that is already? Uh, is that something that we've discussed? Sorry, I didn't quite hear your question, Rishab. You were asking about the blog post. Yeah. Could you ask it again? I was just saying that is that something that uh, is discussed that we know that Harshit is going to do, or is that something that uh, is going to be done after uh, a certain period? The blog post. So my thought was either Harshit can write it or I would write it, but one of the two, I would like to have a blog post just to highlight the good work that's been done and that people can begin using immediately credentials binding to solve interesting problems that they have with the Git problem, Git plugin today. Hmm. Now, in terms of in terms of benefit to the to the organization, I think Harshit's work on on SSH private keys is more valuable than the than the blog post. But the blog post is a great great way to write and and show if he doesn't mind doing it. Well, so. We discussed earlier there was another, so there are two blog posts or just one? One, we had a, I think we discussed that there was one blog post for the binding, the explanation of how to use the binding and what issues that it resolves for the users. Or is this the one that we are talking about? That's the one we're describing, and it's just one. Ultimately, there will, at the end of the project, we'll want you to do a blog post that describes the experience, that summarizes, and that highlights the functionality. This was, for me, just a, a, a good short-term way to describe it for people so that they can realize that the functionality is available. The project's not complete. We haven't done private keys yet, but it's already usable and shipped. Okay. 
that kind of characterize this correctly? Yes. I mean, Harshit, if you can, uh, if you have the time, then um, it, I think it's a good exercise coming from a student's perspective, uh, writing a blog and trying to um, present the idea, the complex idea and abstracting out that idea into a simple blog, into a blog is, is a good exercise for any, uh, it's a good experience. I think. So I don't know if parents in India have this phrase, but but at least my children used to hate it when I would say, you should do that because it will be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe they don't say that in India, but they my, my <laughs> wife used to say, husband, you never should say that. Don't ever say that to your children. <laughs> so they so always that, say. This, this is yeah. not an attempt to give you something that's just good for you, Harshit ultimately but for me the, ch the challenge is implementation is intensely valuable and if you need me or someone else to write the blog post so that you can keep focus on implementation i'd much rather reach the end of the project with a private key implementation than with a blog post and no implementation of private key yeah <laughs> And now I, I am curious, do parents in India ever say that you should do this because it's yeah, good for you? Yeah. All yeah. the time. <laughs> they, <Wow>. they do. <laughs> it's, it's like um, each step of uh, a child's life is defined by that moment. Oh, okay. All right. So you've heard it as frequently as my children heard it. It's like, yeah, I don't ever want to hear that phrase again. That's a terrible <laughs> phrase. <laughs> I think still to this day I hear it. So yeah. <laughs> yes, but, but you're you're st you're still your parents' child. Therefore, it's it's okay. <laughs> At least that was the excuse I gave my children, adults that they are now. You're still my child. Get over it. Yeah. I mean, if Harshit um, wants to focus more on the implementation right now, and rightly so, I would love to work with Mark. Or I, I just like the writing process, so I, I'd like to contribute there. Yes. If we're doing that. Yeah, well, and that, Harshit, if, if you don't mind not being one of the authors of this, um, I think it might be good if we let you stay focused on the code. Do you? you have a feeling one way or the other gee i want to be a writer and I, I want to do some writing on this or no i'd like to stay on the code well, i think i should stay focused on the code because there's uh there's you know there's a concern on the maverick library uh, license and then there's sshj issues also so it would be good for me right now to be focused more on the code rather than you know focusing more on the writing part great then let's rishab you and you and me together i would love to team up with you on it this would be a lot of fun yeah great. okay cool. so let's that's a that's a decision let's call that a decision we're set all right. My apologies. I'm I'm running a little late today, so I need to I need to drop off. Any other things that I'm needed for? I don't think so. Harshit, do you have any other things that you need us for? Well, no. I'm running the time. So. Okay. 
Rashad, you're right. good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Great. All right. Cool. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Bye.